Welcome to the Ultimate Music Theory interview series. I am so excited to be here today to have a fantastic conversation with the amazing Sheila McKibben Yuren, who is my very special guest today. My name is Bori St. Germain from Ultimate Music Theory, and I want to say a big welcome to Sheila McKibben Yuren. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Sheila is. Um, uh, an amazing person. She is my soulmate. Uh, Sheila McKibben Yuren is the co author on our new series, the Ultimate Music Theory ABC Beginner Series, as well as our Ultimate Music Theory certification course for teachers and the exam series that Sheila created, and just so many more. We've actually written over 50 books together, and we're really passionate about sharing our musical journey. So, in introducing Sheila, other than that she's an amazing author, she's also a registered music teacher. Uh, she's um, an Ultimate Music Theory certified teacher, as in fact, she's our examiner. Uh, she teaches voice, harmony, history, uh, music theory. Um, uh, tap dancing, and <laughs> <laughs> not really. But Sheila, why don't you share a little bit about our journey and how the two of us became these passionate music theory authors together? Oh, it's it's funny. It's called taking a chance and stepping out of your comfort zone, and I'm not known for doing that. So I like to consider myself the the queen of theory because I, I want to do as much as I can to be able to provide my students with proper theory. So I had created all of these worksheets and books and I got a, a note from my music distributor because I have a little store here and he said, well, you should check out this, this new series called Ultimate Music Theory. I said, okay, send them to me because I need help. There's stuff that I am just not getting and I just feel like a complete failure when I'm teaching it because I'm telling my kids, I don't know about modes. I'm not sure what they are, but you know what? you just have to do this little pattern and maybe it'll make sense yeah. and then I got your book and I started doing the basic and then I did the intermediate and then I did the advanced and I remember being in the middle of Superstore at the checkout doing this theory book <laughs> crying because I understood modes I understood modes it was so amazing and then I, I thought well you know what I need to send this lady uh, an email and thank her for making mode so clear to me. So I, I did, I sent you an email and I said, you know, do you have any suggestions uh, or are you open to suggestions for some things that uh, work with me? And Glory said, well, sure, I'm always open for suggestions. And then I think my email to you was what, 16 pages? Well, that was the funny thing. I, I remember that first email when you said, are you open to ideas? And I went, oh, I love collaborating. I am definitely an open book and open to learning. And I said, oh, I'm so excited. Like you were to me, Sheila, you were like a gift from God because I was looking for an editor. I was looking for, uh, you know, a co-author. And I mean, our business obviously has grown tremendously in the last 10 years. And I still to this day have those pages. So there was Sheila said <laughs> 15 pages, you know, and not double spaced either of all these ideas. And I went, Oh my goodness. I just, I, I just have to meet this woman. And, uh, and uh, I flew Sheila to Winnipeg and we collaborated as I was just getting into the, the prep one and two. And we had a, I had a fantastic, fantastic time writing. And I think from that, um, you know, we realized that sometimes students are so excited to learn voice and piano and violin and guitar but as soon as you say the word theory as 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 was the experience for me i actually didn't like theory at all when i was a student i just thought it was that oh i have to do theory how boring but some of the things that you and i've really incorporated into the series is changing all of that and when you think about you know, music theory, how can we make it fun? And especially when we get into our, our, our not only our young ones, but I think teenagers and, and students of all ages. And I think one of the things we should share, Sheila, <laughs> other than our, our, our we, well, we have to show the great adventures. If you're having a coffee with us today, can you just type in the word coffee in the chat box? Because when you're on Facebook, what do you want to do? You want to have a cup of coffee. You want to you want to have some fun. And, and if you learn something new, that's a bonus. So I do have to share my coffee cup. Sheila and I have traveled all over North America from coast to coast to coast to coast together. So Sheila, this one here was, do you remember that one? Oh, that was Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Yeah, and where we drove in a red convertible with the top down. 
So uh, Tito were in that red convertible. Yeah, they were. Gone, and we went backstage into the theater. So what about this one, Sheila? Let's jog your memory there. Oh, that was in Halifax at the uh, CFMTA conference. And we were walking down at the waterfront. And all these people were gathered around there. And we said, why are you sitting there? And they said, well, there's going to be fireworks. Um, <laughs> Like we're like, oh wow! So we sat down, yeah. and there was fireworks. Exactly. It was so amazing. That's one of my passions is is fireworks. It's always on my bucket list. When's the next one? So, and we've got one more. This is a great gift, Sheila gave me. Oh, that was in New York. I have. It's been on my bucket list to go to the Met, and we were invited to go to the Met as a VIP guests. Yeah. And I saw the most amazing opera live and I was able to come back and tell my students that opera yeah. is so amazing and they're like opera and I said yes we gotta watch these yeah. so I, it's, it's great it, it, I think you're just you're you just nailed it because when we experience all of those things sometimes people will say oh I'm not going to go to opera it's not my thing but what well, have you ever been because you just don't know until you experience it and just as you said stepping outside your comfort zone um, sometimes you have an aha moment and go oh I, I, I didn't think I would like opera or, oh I didn't think I'd like going to art class and look at me I'm painting all these pictures I'm loving every minute of it and I think when we're teaching our students and I know so uh, you're going to share three tips with us today uh, about um, teaching music theory because a lot of kids do come into class just bored and think that I don't want to do music theory. And as educators and professional teachers, it's our job, it's our responsibility to teach them whether it is voice or whether it is piano, how can we motivate them? So um, maybe we should talk about our Solentito before we reveal our three tips that you have for us. So okay. I'll, I'll start with Sola. So here's Sola and Sheila's gonna introduce Tito. So when Sheila and I were thinking about how can we be effective with teaching, we actually discovered that our differences are what makes us whole, not only in our writing together, but in developing the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course. And if you're interested in learning more about that, just type in UMTC in the chat box and Sheena will, will give you the direct link. You can get on the waiting list. We only open the program up about three times a year, so that'll get you on the waiting list. So UMTC. So here is Sola. Okay, so Sola, let's see what she's all about. So I am a Sola. So um, Sola feels music uh, in her heart and she loves to sing and dance and perform. So that's little Sola. So now Sheila, you tell us about Tito. <laughs> says, Hi, my name is Tito. I feel music in my hands and feet. I love to count, march and conduct. I'm a Tito. I am <laughs> absolutely a Tito. Yes. And and I know that I, I have to just draw attention to you feel music in your hands and feet. So tell us about your hands. Yes, I have degenerative osteoarthritis, which means that uh, the blood flow through my fingers is not the best. And um, when it's winter here in Canada, which feels like that's about 10 months of the year, <laughs> right. uh, my fingers lock up. So I wear uh, compression gloves and that just keeps my fingers, um, the blood flowing through my fingers and it really helps keep the swelling down so that I can continue to teach. Yeah, and all the time I thought that you were like Michael Jackson rock star, you know. <laughs> so we do have three tips today. So let's talk about, um, you teach a lot of students and you teach a lot of young children as well. And it's really why we're so excited to, to talk about the beginner ABC series, but what is your secret weapon that you feel really motivates, encourages young students to learn music theory in a fun way? <laughs> Sola and Tito. I, when we got, we got the Sola and Tito's and I brought them into my studio and I thought, you know what, I'm going to really take to heart what Sola and Tito are all about because yeah. I got was tired of saying, well, I need you to play more dynamics. I need you to hold mm -hmm. your hands properly. It was all about me, me, me. And I wanted the students to be able to have some fun. So I started this little challenge and I would say, Sola says, Right. That we need to work on articulation. 
And Sola says we need to work on our dynamics. And the kids were like, oh, okay, well, I can do that. And I would say, Tito wants to challenge you to do a metronome challenge. And let's see if you can play with different metronome speeds. And Tito thinks that you don't, you can do bonus pages. Can you right. do bonus pages in your theory? And the students, especially my teenage boys, okay? And I have a studio where I have 47 students and I teach Monday to Thursday, basically from eight in the morning till eight at night. Mm -hmm. I'm truly blessed to be able to teach at a, a French language school here in town that's given me a studio right in the school. And that's why uh, the kids refer to me as Madame Sheila, because yeah. that's how you speak to your elders. You speak yeah. to them with dignity. So mm -hmm. Madame Sheila started to introduce these Sola and Tifo challenges. And they just bloomed. The students were so excited to be able to say, I can do that, Sola. And they would start talking to Sola and Tito. Yeah. And now we have a new challenge every week where, or every month, where Sola and Tito challenge them to do something more that's outside of their comfort zone. Right. And we take steps. Our newest challenge is, is our goal setting. And the children had to set goals. And one of the goals was, you know, to do more theory. Well, I can say, all right, well, you know, you have to do more theory because theory is important. Theory is the foundation of music. Yeah. If you go to school, you don't tell your school teacher, oh, well, I don't want my child to learn how to print because they're never going to need it. I just want them to learn how to read. I'm like, no, yeah. you have to learn how to read or you can learn how to print. Yes. And it's the same with music. So Tito started this challenge yeah. where students had to do uh, both pages. And then they had to do memory terms. So Tito was all about the terms and doing bonus pages in their theory. Mm -hmm. And the students embraced that. And all of a sudden, I had students where I had stop signs in their workbooks. Like, seriously, stop signs. I one little guy who is, um, you know, diagnosed ADHD. And I got an email from his mom saying, we can't stop him. He wants to do more pages in theory. And I thought, wow. Wow. It works. You've got a child with ADHD who has a, a special needs plan at school and is coming into his piano lesson and he is doing 10 pages of theory in his theory beginner A book. So much so that I you know, have to post it stop sign and say, please don't go past this because we want to have time to do it at the lesson together. Yeah. So, you know, really became my secret weapons to encouraging and motivating students so that they could learn that they could take steps. They could just take those small steps and build their goals and build their confidence. Mm -hmm. I always say, you know, Sola says, if you make a mistake, what happens? Does the piano blow up? Does the catch on fire? Sola says, we just take it a little slower and let's take it more step by step. And that's one thing that I found when I actually started to do the Ultimate Music Theory program, because I started as a teacher learning, and I discovered that there were actually steps that I could take to be a better teacher by following the steps that Gloria had put in the Ultimate Music Theory workbooks. And it was just so freeing. It was so awesome to be able to have a program that touched visual learners, auditory learners, yeah. in a learners, special needs learners. Um, yeah, that was one of, the things, one of the things I wanted to share was that you just really tapped on something about how students really connect with Solantito, you know. Um, and by the way, if you don't have your Solantito pack yet, just type the words Sola in your in the chat box and and we'll send you the direct link to get your Solantito pack, which also includes a whole bunch of other stuff and stickers and and the Solantito song and so on. But one of the things I wanted to share with you, we're talking about young children right now. However, I had one advanced student, she was doing her grade nine, level nine piano exam. And she is a definite Tito, very strict, very structured, everything is in time. And so that is her personality. She's like you, Sheila, she's a Tito. 
And in order for her to really perform this, I thought, what words can I use? How can I get her? And I'm thinking, you know, play more open, bring your arms away from your body. I'm just thinking of all these things that I can do to get her to into the performance mode. So I'm thinking and thinking, and Sol and Tito, of course, are sitting on the piano because they're part of my studio. And finally, I said to her, um, Fiona is her name. I said, could you imagine that you're Sola? How would Sola play this? And honestly, Sheila, it was like magic. Her arms went away from her body. Her posture was a little taller. She played the most expressively I've ever heard her play. And I just went, who are you and what happened? And she said, well, you told me to play like Sola. And so I did. Well, guess what? She got 90 on her level nine piano exam, 90. Wow. And it was because her mindset. And when we have those, those little students that are shy, you know, as you said, Sheila, sometimes my students will talk to Sola, even if they don't want to maybe talk to me because, well, I always put on a little accent. Sola's actually got a bit of an English accent in my studio. <laughs> and I simply love it. They keep asking if Sola could please teach them the lesson instead of Miss Glory. And I get a little offended, I might say. But at any rate, <laughs> it's just kind of a, a fun exercise to do. And, and I think that's what it is. You know, with students, whether you're teaching young children or those teenagers, you can apply the, the magic of, um, of your secret weapon, which is the Solentito. I know one other teacher, I think it was um, uh, Camara, um, who said that she actually used um, Sola the body to get really wonderfully curved fingers. And, and she said that was just, it was soft, it was easy for her students to hold. And uh, so there's a lot of cool things, not only that, but of course they develop their own personality. So we love Sola and Tito, don't we, Sheila? Oh, I love it. You know what, Tito has, Tito has a, a, a little trick that he does. I have some, again, young students and I don't put, in order, I don't put this huge pressure on them to play with proper hand positions. I encourage them to learn to build themselves so that they can play that because, you know, yes, they have to play with proper hand positions. But if you're struggling to read ABC because you have dyslexia or you have a learning disability, I want you to feel positive. So yeah. we make it fun if the students are playing and their wrists drop below the keyboard, Cheeto goes on the attack. <laughs> like a shark, and then you know his little eighth note is the shark, and they go, "Oh, I gotta get my wrists back up because okay. you know, like me. <laughs> That is totally funny. I'm totally stealing that idea. Yeah. Oh, so if they see, if they see Tito coming on like a shark, da -na, da -na, they know that their wrists are in the water, and they've got to get it up before Tito bites them. <laughs> and uh, and again, it's it's so much fun because I could say, lift your wrists up. They're dripping below the board. Or right. I could go, da -na, da -na, <laughs> da -na, da -na, da -na, and they know. Yes. And then it becomes, oh, right, I don't want Tito to bite me. Yeah. And it's safe. It's so safe yes. for children to learn and grow and gain confidence mm -hmm. because a little stuffy says, hey, take a yes. chance. Why don't you put that metronome on at 100? Oh, why don't we try 120? Right. Let's see what we can go. Yeah. And they're not disappointing anybody. Yeah. They're taking a chance. They're building their confidence. Yes. So it just, whether you've got, like, I don't like to say normal students, but I don't have normal students. I have kids who just want to learn and have fun. Yeah. And when they come in and say, I don't want to do any writing work. I don't want to do any game, you know, things like that. I said, well, you're not going to do any writing work. You're going to have fun. Yeah. You're going to have fun games. Well, and it you just know, a pencil. Yeah, and you know, I did an entire um, series of Facebook Lives on how we learn faster um, through game playing, and mm -hmm. it is all a part of the studio experience. And in this day and age, when often teachers feel like, "Oh, my students," you know, they they put all the priorities there. Well, I have to go to soccer. Well, I have to go to dance. Well, I have to do this. I have to do that. And so, why are students dropping out of music lessons? Maybe it's, you know, and I know we talk a lot about um, the importance of, of how we can motivate our students. And in the certification course, we, we really drill deeper into learning styles and submodalities and things like that. But it is really important to engage 
um, you know, it, there's a, I, guess, I think there's a fine line between being um, critical, if I could use that word, yeah. uh, you know, constructively and having fun. Because I remember my teacher um, when I did my, my ARCT and she wasn't really fun but she was incredibly knowledgeable and she was very strict with me. And I was the party girl and I still am. I'm known as the ultimate music theory party queen. And, <laughs> and I think one of the things that I find too, that, that we need to have the balance. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, yes, we go and we have fun. And that's number one is that if you're not, because what do parents want for their children? Fun, joy, you know, uh, a great life, good health, all of those things that we all want. But they also want them to to move forward in their music. And I think by using Solentito as a teaching tool and a challenge and all the great ideas that you have, it not only helps them learn because we are being strict, but we're doing it in a fun way. So I, I really like those. I have a question for you, Sheila, because you do have a lot of students that you teach. Oh, and by the way, again, if you want to get your Sola and Tito, just simply put your Sola in the chat box and we'll make sure you get that direct link so you too can party like a rock star. <laughs> so what do you maybe consider the most important connection between you know the student and the teacher? Like, How do you feel about that um, in your studio? Um, I, the most important connection, I think, between my studio and with me as a teacher and my students is that it's a safe place. My studio is a safe place. And if they don't understand a concept in theory, I don't want them coming to me and saying, I don't get it. I'm stupid. Right. Because that's. I, I mean, I grew up in a very, a very strict, like you had to perform. We were had high performance expectations. And when my students come in and they say, you know, they'll come in with little tears in their eyes say, Madame Sheila, I only practiced twice. And right. I'm like, woohoo, good for you. That yeah. was two times you chose to practice. Awesome. Right. So I want them to learn that choosing to learn is something that is easy. And we can just take those tiny little steps mm -hmm. to make learning possible. So making learning possible is what my motto is, I guess you can say, when my students mm -hmm. come into that door. I don't care whether you're dyslexic. I don't care whether you're with ADHD, ADD. I have autism spectrum students. I have students who have... Uh, you know, emotional needs who, you know, who need to have what we call those five minutes of the chocolate lesson at the very beginning of our lesson, where they can just safely tell me what's going on in their lives. Yeah. And then we can use music to make things better. Yeah. And to be able to have a child do a page in their theory and go, oh, I get that. That makes so, so much sense. And then when they're playing the piano, we can go, oh, I get that. That makes so much sense. I had a student come and she's learning a song by Queen and we're looking at that. She's like, I don't get this. I don't get this. And I said, okay, let's take a look at those chords. If I was to write the, the root quality chord symbols above, right. what is it? And she goes, oh, it's F. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's F slash A. Oh, it's F slash C. Oh my gosh, I've got this. And that, and that, that light bulb goes on, doesn't it? And I think... It, when you really talk about those students coming in and that safe place for learning and when we really drill down on you know what is what is the the type of student that comes into your studio but not only are they um you know some as you said just you know your average kids if you can call kids average but within those average kids or adhd kids or if you're dyslexic in, in addition to that, you're also a visual, auditory, or kinesthetic learner. Mm -hmm. And I know you and I really worked a lot on this when we did the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course. Um, as a neurolinguistic practitioner, we really realized that, you know, it's, and I, and I remember that you found the quote that I love. Can you, can you share that one? Yeah, okay. it's, it's if, if a child can't learn the way you're te you teach, maybe you should teach the way the child can learn. Yeah, and, and I love that. that that changed my whole teaching when mm -hmm. I was in, the, in taking the ultimate music theory certification course. Everything that is out there for all the teachers to do, I've done too. 
And yeah. I was taking it and working through it, and it suddenly it dawned on me, and I just I had this feeling like I should go back and apologize to to students, you know, 30, 40, because mm -hmm. I've been I've been teaching for 40 years, 42 years. And uh, you know, I used to teach because I was taught that yeah. you know there's only one way to learn and there's only one way to play. And I would look at theory and I go, well, I don't get it. Right. And, you know, why why is this? It's telling me these things, but I don't get it. And I would get very frustrated. Mm -hmm. And then when I found the ultimate music theory course, I cried many times because I finally got it. It, it, it just it it really sunk in that if a student wasn't getting it the way I was teaching them, mm -hmm. I needed to change how I was teaching them. Yes. It's it's such an aha moment, and I know for myself as I was going through um, the program myself as as an educator and 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 um, completing my certification as an NLP practitioner, I thought when I started that I thought, oh, I'm definitely kinesthetic learner. I would have bet you money on that. <laughs> yeah. And I a lot of teachers as they're working through the certification course, they think they're one learning style, but then when you actually drill through it, you go, oh. Oh no, I'm a visual learner. Who knew? So I think as a teacher, when um, and I do want to share a quick story with you because it it really was so dear to my heart. One of the teachers um, that uh, completed the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course, she called me one day. She's practically crying on the phone. She said, "Glory, I have to share this with you. I have a young boy." I've been teaching him for about three years and I, I just don't seem to connect with him. There is just a disconnect and I don't even know why. And after completing your course, I realized that, oh, first of all, she said, I am a kinesthetic learner. Me, I know that for a fact. And she said, and this young boy used to come into his lesson and he'd always say, oh, could you play that for me? And I always said, no, you read the music. And every week he'd come in and he'd say, you know, could you just play it? And she'd say, no, read the music. And she said, after taking your course and, and understanding how to analyze my students' learning style, I realized he's an auditory learner oh my gosh all these years i've been teaching him as if he's kind of like right so she yeah. said so the next week he came in which is why she called me and she said i'm going to play a song for you and then you're going to play it and he was in complete shock and mm -hmm. he said, you never so she played him the adams family you know da -da -da -da. <laughs> yeah da -da -da. and after she played it she said to him can you play that and he sat down and he played it verbatim ba -da -da -dum, immediately. And she was in awe. She said, I can't do that. She mm -hmm. said, if you played a song for me and said, go ahead and play it. She said, I couldn't do that. She said, you are amazing. And then she brought out the music and they talked about, you know, the theory concepts that were in it because he was obviously working through his theory book as well. And she said, when he left, he turned and looked at her right in the eye and he said, that's the best piano lesson I ever had. Yeah. And she just, she said she was just bawling her eyes out. She said, I just had this breakthrough moment realizing that, oh, now I get it, you know? Um, and if, if you're interested in learning more about the UMTC certification course, just type UMTC and we'll just send you the link. You can jump on the waiting list and, and, um, and learn more about it. Now, one of the things that, uh, well, well, we do have to show our books, but there's one more little tip. So we, this is tip number three. So tip number one was your secret weapon, which is your soul and Tito. Use those personalities to motivate and educate your students. Uh, secret weapon number two was understanding your students' learning styles and communicating with them in a safe place. And now, Miss Sheila McKibben, you're in. We are on what the heck is ICE? So in the April, beginner ABC series we yeah. created this really fun concept and I'll let you break the ice and it's not the stuff that's in my front yard <laughs> <laughs> I love ice imagine yeah. compose explore right. I is for imagine C is for compose and E is for explore and the wonderful thing about ice is there's no wrong answer Exactly. What, it's, there is no wrong answer. And so, for example, I had a student doing uh, this page in the workbook, uh, Theory Book 3, in the uh, Music Theory Beginner C book. Uh -huh. And the it was Imagine, Compose, and Explore. Imagine Sola and Tito are riding a roller coaster. 
compose a song using the white keys on the piano, explore the sound as the roller coaster goes up high and down low, and on the same note as the ride comes to an end. Now, my students said, well, why do I have to end on the same note? Right. I said, well, where are you starting? Where are you getting on the roller coaster? Right. And he said, oh, 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 okay, okay. So, and then he's, you could see his brain mm -hmm. going and he was going, okay, they're climbing up the stairs and they're at Wonderland and then they're, they get on the roller coaster. And then he just went on exploring these things. I'm going, you know, did you realize that you just played an arpeggio? Did you know that you just played a dominant seventh chord? Did you know that you just did a glissando? Yeah. And he's doing all of these things and he's getting stronger and straighter and bigger. And he's saying, I just created a composition, didn't I? Yeah. And I said, yeah, you did. And there was so much musicality in it. And having students when they when you take music if you take the theory and you just do it at the kitchen table no 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 take yeah. their theory and take them to the piano and make them see it say it write it hear it play it because even these little games that we have here mm -hmm. and I, like i i post a lot of my my own little videos in my own teaching teaching uh studio Facebook page because I have media permission from the parents and the parents like to see what we're doing at the lesson so that uh, they feel that they're a part of it. But the other day, my hand was really swollen. I mean, we were in the middle of one of these ice storms here, so the yeah. air was wet. And I'm looking at this page, but I said to my student, I my hands are too sore to play it. I want you to be the teacher. Right. And he went, what do you mean? And I said, well, you have to decide which one of these are you going to play? And you have to follow and you have to see the notes and you have to say them and hear them in your head. And then I'm going to tell you the answer. And you would have thought that I'd made him king for a day. <laughs> he sat up, it was so awesome because he could decide where the music was going to go. And giving students that freedom to compose and explore mm -hmm. using the, their own imagination where there is absolutely no wrong answer. They have a little bit of a guideline, whether Sola is picking apples. And we had to talk about articulation because are they dropping on the ground and are the apples going <clears throat> and flattening out? Were they like fermatas? Were they, they dropping like staccatos? Were they dropping with a tenuto feel? And after the children composed and created, we explored it together as collaborists, as like, I wasn't the teacher. I was just someone who was exploring with them. And giving a child the power to say, no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this is like giving them the keys to a musical kingdom that just opens the world for them. And I have at least four students this year who will be playing their own composition in exams and music festivals. Wow. They they wrote it and uh, two of them are actually duets that, that the students and I wrote together. Good old Super Mario Brothers theme. <laughs> But we took what they wanted and made it into music because we used ice. Ice was our breaking. Ice was the way that we could I could break through to that student that all of a sudden theory wasn't just uh, I got to do the rules and, and write it this way. And it's either right or wrong. They had a chance to create it. They had yeah. a chance to imagine, compose and explore. I think that's one of the fantastic things. I know when Sheila and I collaborated to to do the um, the ABC series, we really thought about those young children. Uh, the ABC series is for children uh, maybe six or seven years old, seven, okay. eight. Um, and, and I think when you can engage in the act of writing, we actually retain 30 to 40% more than just through 
doing it in our book. I know that some, I've heard some teachers say, well, I just do music theory at the piano. I don't do any written work. But in fact, it's really important to engage in all three modalities, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. And that's how we learn faster. Throughout the um, ABC series, uh, you will see 12 lessons, which is the format that we use for all the um, Ultimate Music Theory Rudiments workbooks. And you will also see a little review quiz. And it is not a test, so there's no marks, everyone. There's no such thing as failure. It's only feedback. It's only a lesson learned. Uh, one of the things that, that I've learned, too, is that if you make a mistake, yes, you've learned something new. Uh -huh, exactly. I loved what Sheila just said about doing the piece. And, and, and I, that is such good tip, Sheila, where they're composing freely. And oh, if you are interested in learning more about the ABC series, just put ABC in the chat box and we'll send you the direct link so you can explore the ABC students with your with your um, series with your students as well. It's just mapped out in such an easy to understand way. And of course, Sheila talked about the Solentito. Hopefully you can see a bit of the page uh -huh. because Solentito are a big part of learning uh, because they help the students, right? Sheila, the mm -hmm. solo press and the Tito tips. And um, it's really, really fun for students. I was gonna say, I love the part where you said they went up the roller coaster and your students said, well, why do I have to land on the same note? And you said, well, you got off at the bottom. You're not gonna hop off and fall off at the mm -hmm. top. Of the That's brilliant because yeah. they can associate that so easily with understanding, well, that's the tonic. You got on and now you're gonna get off. And I think it's important to, to give them those success tools. Sure, there's rules that can be broken and so on, but first we have to learn the rules before we can learn how to break the rules, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I know that you said that this book is designed, you know, for six, six to eight year olds. I. Um, I am one of those teachers that gets a lot of parents that say, well, my child is in Jardin, at, at, which is junior kindergarten here, yeah. and they see the students going to your studio, they see them coming out, they're having fun, and we want them to learn. Yeah. So I currently have four four-year-olds wow. in this book. Wow. And one of those four-year-olds is one that I have to put the stop sign on oh. because he wants to do more. Right. It works. And when I do this with the students, we have to do absolutely everything that's on the piano. I like I have different instruments in my room as well. I have like the xylophone and, and the handbells. I have step bars. I have a uh, kajon. I have different drums. So yeah. if it's a pop thing, they get to pick their drum and they get to tap it. If it's uh, a play thing we get to pick our instrument and they get to play it and we make games out of these every page of this book with a four-year-old is an inspiration to learning yes. so, yeah so I say that, and then i tell you that i have a 60 some odd year old beginner who is in this book yes and who loves this book because she has, she has arthritis like me, so it's hard to write. The staffs are a little bit bigger. They're easier to write. And she's learning. So it's, it's the most wonderful thing. She always wanted to do piano, and now she's doing it. So, yes, you can use this book with any age, right. any child who's a beginner. Now, it's absolutely fantastic with six- to eight-year-olds, but my students, studio is full of you know 16 year old beginners 60 year old beginners and four year old beginners mm -hmm. so letting you know from experience that if you take the the beginner program the beginner music theory beginner a with solon tito and you make every page about seeing saying writing hearing playing which is all about having fun yeah be actually teaching those kids and pre-teaching them so many things and i like to look at them and i go you know that you were just you've been pre-taught about tonality and they go okay what's that <laughs> yeah. yeah you know it's something that you're doing right now and they go oh i'm doing tonality I'm <laughs> happy sad and then we you know once we get into the pentascales and it's major and minor oh my gosh i have them they're transposing everything there because they're just doing it by pentascales 
Yeah. And, you know, it's, I think it's one of the things that, that we were so passionate about in creating this. Um, it, as a matter of fact, Sheila and I were in um, California and I, <laughs> I remember um, sitting and, and talking through the creation of this and just the whole mind mapping of how can we bring that to to the young students. But I love what you said, because actually, I must admit that I have um, two 10 year olds and one 11 year old student that are, uh, they actually went through the beginner A, which book am I holding up here? I'm holding up C. They went through the beginner A book, then they went through the beginner B book and they just started beginner C. And so you're right, this really is not just, well, oh, it's a baby book because it's not cartoon characters. You know, one of the comments uh, a teacher said, she said, oh, I like your cartoon characters. And I said, we don't have cartoon characters. What are you talking about? And she said, Sol and Tito. I said, no, they're not cartoon characters. Sol and Tito are teaching tools. Yeah. And, and we're mapping these out so that it's fun and engaging and for children. So I think that um, when you explore these and implement these techniques in your studio, you're going to get that wow factor mm -hmm. because things are going to go really fast and change from, oh, do we have to do theory to, can I do theory? <laughs> yes. You know, can I get the next book? So it is a series of three, beginner A, beginner B, beginner C, and then that leads them into the prep one, prep two, um, basic, intermediate, and advanced rudiments workbook. And if you haven't guessed by now, Sheila and I are passionate about enriching lives through music education, and we're here for you. Sheila, I, I gotta do a couple of things. Number one, I wanna mention that if you're not already part of our Ultimate Music Theory Facebook group, absolutely, um, hop on to the Ultimate Music Theory Facebook group because we've got lots of um, good conversations in there. It's a group where we support each other as teachers. So you're not alone. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Just ask away. We're there to support you. And we also have the Ultimate Music Theory blog, which is an amazing resource for you. Most of the blogs are written by Sheila McKibben Uran. She's an amazing writer and I love everything that you do. And she uses such amazing imagery that can really help you learn whether you're visual auditory or kinesthetic so i want to say thank you sheila for your amazing blog writing because i always put a smile on my face and and when i get to read those and and share those with everyone else so in wrapping up our three tips today we learned about the secret weapon sheila yeah. oh wait but wait there's no. more <laughs> The Sola and Tito Show. I think Sheila and I should do a show called the Sola and Tito Show. Oh. <laughs> so well, we Glory, I sent you that picture of my student who finished his beginner A book, and he thought that was it, that that was it. He wasn't going to have any more fun with, with Sola and Tito. Yeah. And I went and, and I said, well, here's your new book, your beginner B book. And he was like, oh, yes. Yes, and the mom ran in from the studio. What's or from the waiting room? Said, "What's going?" I get the next book. I get yeah. the next book. And he was like this, and it was so fun. I just, yeah. I, I mean, he just made me smile because yeah. this was what it's worth. He said, "I love doing this. Yes. We're having so much fun." You know, I had, I did an article a number of years ago for um, a homeschool magazine. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, a parent who sent me an email, which I think we we shared in a in a in a blog uh, some time ago. And her son was autistic, and so he was in the basic rudiments workbook at the time. It was before we wrote the ABC series. He was 16 years old, and she shared that he was so obsessed with the ultimate music theory basic rudiments workbook and he went on to do his actual piano exam and he scored over 80 percent he'd never scored that ever in his life and she said this success the the program the way that it's made you know mapped out when um we first started started um writing the series i did so much research on on how to put together a publication that is for successful learning. And a big surprise to me was, do you know that you can actually buy a workbook that is detrimental to your learning? Who knew? 
And it's because it's presented in such a confusing way, or it's 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 just mapped out for for whatever without a lot of thought, perhaps behind it. And it can and you can just if you're buying a book on mechanics and you can't figure it out, well then the book wasn't very well written, and you're not going to be a mechanic. So when we started writing this, there was a lot of research and development going into how can we make it easy to teach fun to learn and and help your student develop their musicianship skills. And I think the reason that we're so passionate about music theory is we are encompassing the whole musician. It's not just about, oh, I play by ear or, oh, I'm a great sight reader or I accompany the choir, but that we're creating musicianship skills that that will be a lifelong skill. And we want to want you to be playing for forever and, and having all of those opportunities. And, and it all starts with beginner a <laughs> yes, that's right and and the thing is we're not it, this these books uh for me don't just teach music they teach children that something that looks tricky can be learned just by taking steps yes. and Ella says let's just start with the very at the very beginning let's just start here and then all of a sudden they're playing and they're creating and they didn't know that they could do that and right. if you're given a goal, like if you're at work or something, and all of a sudden something is hard, and all you think is, well, Solo says, just take the first step. Mm -hmm. uh, you've created a human, not just a musician. You know, you've created yeah. this. It's it's just amazing. And I mean, I've got a, a little two-year-old granddaughter, and I can, she already knows Solo and Tito. Yeah. I am just waiting until she lets me actually teach her. Yes. <laughs> and I can put her in the books and yeah. she's going to have so much fun. It's, it's gonna, wonderful. She's going to have a blast. Yeah. So um, in order to learn more about uh, what Sheila and I do, um, please just type in the words UMTC in the chat box and we'll send you the link to the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course. Uh, if you are a um, musician uh, or teacher that's interested in teaching, uh, you can do the beginner ABC series. And don't forget your teaching tips today using your Sola and Tito stuffies that you can get. And we invite you to join us on our uh, Ultimate Music Theory Facebook page. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please put love it. <laughs> <laughs> love it in the comments and make sure that you love this link and please share it you know we are passionate about enriching lives through sharing these things um i think you know in this day and age now that we have all these resources and we can share things via uh you know the internet it's it's the most amazing time to learn because you can just learn by simply sharing things and networking with other teachers. And um, one of the things, Sheila and I are gonna be um, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada for the CFMTA conference, which is being held in Winnipeg uh, this July. And we are planning on having a special VIP Ultimate Music Theory um, day or evening or luncheon. We haven't got all the details worked out yet, but um, make sure that you connect with us on our Ultimate Music Theory Facebook page and we'll send you more information on that. Thanks for the love. Oh, I see some love out there, Woohoo! I guess we should give a shout out to a few people. We see Marilyn Hooper, uh, Pauline Ray Miller. We have to say congratulations to her son, Voxoff, who is the youngest Ultimate Music Theory certified teacher in history. So congratulations to Pauline. Uh, Ray Lee, why? Wow, this is great. Thank you. Uh, Marilyn, she said all of her beginners started in prep one la last year. So how do we switch to B now? Yay. You just do it. Yeah. All you do if your kids are in prep one, because that, I mean, this is a new course. And yeah. if they're, they're working through the prep one rudiments and you're finding that it's going a little fast for them, then just go, just put it aside and go right into prep into the beginner music theory yeah. B. I have done that with at Maybe. least 10 students. Yeah. And it's not stepping back, it's expanding. Yeah. It's just expanding the learning field so that yeah. they can then step back into where they were with the prep one after they've done beginner B and beginner C. And yeah. they will have more knowledge and the ability to create more. So it's I, just giving them confidence. Go for it. 
Yeah, I agree with you 100%, Sheila, and I did the same thing. I had a, a few very young students that were in the Prep 1, the Green Book, yeah. uh, because we hadn't written the ABC series yet. And uh, as soon as they were out, I just said, oh, guess what? We're going to get to do the beginner ABC series, so you can just put your Green Book aside for now. Let's do And they are loving it, and it is, mm -hmm. and they're moving so fast through it. So mm -hmm. it is definitely, yeah, and then we'll come back and we'll do the A, so, uh, or do that. So what age do you start the match she said I have lots of preschoolers so um, Raylin I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly um, uh, we absolutely as Sheila said she's got some really young students in there and I think that when you have kids that are engaged in music whether they're ages three four or five they're ready to learn um, yeah. I remember my daughter Sherry when Sheila and I were hanging out in Las Vegas driving our red convertible <laughs> all around and going backstage to see Elton John and the keyboard player. We had such a great time. Um, my daughter, Sherry, started when she was very young. She was actually two years old, almost three, when she started in music lessons. And um, I actually taught music for young children for over 20 years. And and I think that you need to start when you're two or when you're three, just like little Abigail, uh, yeah. Sheila's granddaughter. She's already curious. I saw her sitting at the piano, even if you're just there. So by all means, use the beginner A book with those um, with those little ones. Uh, hey, Janelle, she says, Sola. Yeah, grab your Sola and Tito books for sure because they're super cute. Do you have a Tito trick to encourage kids to try watching the music instead of their hands? You know, it's an interesting thing that you said that, Marilyn, because um, there are a couple of tricks, um, Tito tricks. That's a good one. I like Tito tricks, Sheila. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Tito trick. Um, yeah. The other thing that, uh, you know, I think, and we talked a little bit about the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learner. So sometimes we think that they have to stare at the music. I'll tell you what I do when I'm teaching is that when my student, and we're doing a new piece and their book is up at the top, I usually stare at their eyes. I want to learn, where are they watching? Are they watching the music? Are they looking at their hands? Are they staring out the window? Uh, because they can, they have the topography of the piano. They don't need to look at the keys. They they have it memorized. And to this day, I have some students, advanced students, that are doing the old look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down, mm -hmm. because they just don't have the confidence. So, um, you know, I think you can always pull the cover down, which is something that I do, put a little blanket over it. What do you do, Sheila, when that happens? I take my little whiteboard and put oh. it under their necks. Good one. You know what? I'm glad you mentioned that. The whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, right here. Right this, here. This whiteboard is like 10 years old. And look at it. I yeah. use it every day. Every it's day. It's an amazing shape. So I put the whiteboard here. And then the other thing that I do, and this is actually something that I do with the theory books, when they are they have to do the see say right here play like i just if they have to see it they have to say it they have to write it they have to play it so if they're playing something that's in in their theory books and and actually i did this this right here uh on page 74 we had to write the notes i have them put their hands in the c pentascale which is uh, using pentascales is amazing and then i said okay look at me play g Okay, now we are going to step down. We are going to skip up. Don't don't look at the piano. Look at me. And mm -hmm. so they were playing sideways. And I just said, you just played that. And you didn't look once. You didn't look at, at anything but me following this along. Because when you tell your hands to do it, mm -hmm. they do it. They do it. Yeah. It's yeah. such an interesting connection, isn't it? Between and think about how complicated it is to play the piano. I mean, you're you're you are looking here, reading this vertical line across. Your ears are hearing sounds that are going up and down and loud and soft, and your hands are playing vertically, and then your foot has to go up and down. Mm -hmm. it, it's quite, I think it should be an Olympic sport. I used to say that to my oh. students, is, is that should be an Olympic sport. Um, I think in wrapping up, we've had such a great time here. Oh my God, we've been, you're my longest interview in Oh, history. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, I just think we had so much to cover and I just wanna say a big thank you, Sheila, because it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for sharing your three tips, which were, what's your secret weapon, which is using Sol and Tito as effective teaching tools in your studio. Number two was uh, an important connection is making sure that your students know they're in a safe place and that you're teaching to the students individual learning style, visual auditory and kinesthetic. And the third thing is 
um, you know, use ice, imagine, compose, and explore to create that connection of musicality in your um, in your studio. And with that, make sure to jump on and grab your um, ABC series. And UMTC is the code to put into the um, the chat box if you'd like more information on the certification course. And Sheila, of course, is your lovely examiner. Uh, any parting words, Sheila? I just want to thank you, Glory, for giving the opportunity here for teachers to learn from other teachers. I know when I grew up, uh, I grew up in, in a teaching community and all the teachers were so close minded. It was like they had secrets and they had iron gates on them and, and you couldn't learn. You know, you couldn't. It was just taboo. Yeah. And you've given us the chance to say, you know what, this works for me, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the Facebook uh, the Facebook group, it's like, you know, try it. It, it yeah. may not work with one student, but it could work with another student. Absolutely. And there's no stupid questions. I remember as a young teacher feeling, well, if I don't get this, I would apologize to my students. I don't understand modes. I'm sorry. Nobody can explain it to me. So just, you know, cry. Yeah. Uh, and now I understood modes because I asked a question and I yeah. kept wanting to learn. So keep learning because the best teachers are those teachers that are willing to learn differently and yeah. accept that every student is a different learner. Absolutely. So this is amazing. Thank you so much, Glory, for giving us this forum. I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you, Sheila. We've got some fantastic guests coming up in the Ultimate Music Interview Series, and if um, uh, which is every Friday live on our Facebook page. Um, if you have a guest that you would like me to interview, if you have suggestions, make sure to put them in the chat box, um, and we usually reveal who is our guest of the week uh, on Tuesdays after our Facebook live um, interview. So um, I want to say thank you again to Sheila, my superhero. Love you so much and I will see you soon. Thanks okay. for joining us today. Bye. Bye from Solentino. Oh, you got it. <laughs>